Boy, it's your boy, the Dennis Quaid of playing Tiny Glade, Jack Slack, and we're going to be looking at some uh, habits of Benoit Saint-Denis today, maybe some positive, maybe some negative, uh, maybe some techers, but just some stuff. Straight off the bat, uh, well, his, his striking is spazzy as hell, but we'll get into that later. Um, this is interesting because he hits just like basic cage wrestling 101 ideal takedown in a second, and it's the one that you'll see Habib using and... Basically all those AKA lads, all the ATT lads, anyone who can does this. Double unders, which he helps through with some uh, shoulder strikes there, fakes the trip, steps to the middle and turns him over. Right, this is such a strong takedown because... Goes for the trip, steps to the middle. Right, this is the important point. This foot going up here, your hip on his penis. Classic technique. He's going to rotate his upper body and bring Saeed around. Now, this is important because Saeed has this overhook. The overhook stops Benoit Saint-Denis going around his back, which isn't so much an issue when you're on the fence, but will be when he peels them off. If Saeed keeps this overhook, this one here, da, 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 he, ha he can only post with one hand, he'll probably rotate and fall on his back. The, may the, the thing that most people do, most good fighters do to stay up, is that they'll release that overhook and put it on the mat and put the other hand on the mat as well. And they'll just have, they'll be in that quad pod position. But that means that Benoit Saint-Denis or whoever is throwing them is then behind them with the uh, with the body lock. And you'll see that in like loads of Habib's fights, that one with Abel Trujillo especially. Um, but he keeps the overhook. He only has one hand to post. It's not enough. It ends up on his back. Now, see, he does a really good job here of uh, keeping his knees to his chest. Butterfly guard, what Benoit, Benoit Saint-Denis wants to do really this knee, he wants to gobble that up between his legs. He's going to try and put his elbow or his uh, hand on top of that knee and step wide over it. But, so he does a really good job of keeping his knees to his chest and the other foot on the hip is really helping there too. So Benoit saint is walking in circles in the tripod, which can be a bit tiring, um, but he's not getting anything done. He wants to swallow that knee there, see? And he's having a really hard time. Helps that uh, so he's holding his wrist there too. Speed up a lot. Heavyweight speed. Here we go. Oh, we're going women's MMA speed. Right, here's where Zahid gets past. And like most, this is a thing that works really well against MMA fighters generally. Damien Meyer and BJ Penn both had great success doing this. The butterfly guard, really good for getting up, really good for sweeping. Benoit Saint-Denis used the butterfly guard to get up from underneath Tiago Moises and used it to sweep Frivola. So it's a really solid technique. But we're talking, you know, te techers and counters. It's not there are bad techniques. It's that there are answers to said techniques. Especially if you can draw them out in certain times and, certain, and, and counter them in certain ways. So what Benoit Saint-Denis does here is something that uh, Damien Meyer and BJ Penn did a lot. When these knees are in tight to the chest, you're in good position because he wants to try and step over it and he can't. The moment that you start extending that leg to try and lift this dude, that leg's going to start coming, the knee is going to start coming away from the chest. So what Damien Meyer and BJ Penn used to do was just allow people to start elevating them. In this instance, Benoit saint he actually backsteps. He uses his left arm, he grabs some butt cheek with his left hand there, he uses his left elbow to keep Saeed's knee down, backsteps. You see that Saeed extends that top leg to try and stay in contact with Benoit, but his right leg's just floating in the air, away from his chest. And saint comes back down, and his left knee goes into the hip pocket on that side there. Oops. On that side. If you get your knee into their hip pocket, you pretty much got that side shut down, guard-wise. Um, you know, th this side here, this if you drew a line down the middle of their bodies from above, the left side is in mount. It's this side that still has a guard here. The one butterfly hook, something that uh, Gegard Musassi ended up playing a lot against guys like uh, Chris Weidman. But this is this is not really a guard. This is like trying to recover now. Um, and from here, I think Benoit Santini ends up dismounting. But there is a very cool pass that BJ Penn used to do here. So here he is doing it against the other best lightweight in the world at the time, Takanori Gomi, in Rumble on the Rock. This was BJ Penn like at his best. Uh, we're we're going to get to it in a second. He ends up in the butterfly half guard. Or not really the butterfly half guard, but BJ Penn's top leg here 
is essentially grapevining that bottom leg and keeping it straight so that that knee is not going to come back in. This leg is in a butterfly hook of, of Takanori Yomi, that is. Um, and what BJ Penn's going to do is he's going to try and keep this leg annoying uh, and, and keeping Gomi's leg straight. He's going to, he's got this underhook here, which is really important. He's going to push down on the top of this knee, normally with his elbow, sometimes with his hand, and he's going to take a giant step that way. And it's really cool to watch. I, I stole this like 10 years ago and I do it all the time. It's so much fun when you get it right. Takes that one out, covers the top of the knee, takes a big step, and he's straight into mount. And that was always really scary about BJ Penn. He would let you get some kind of guard, and then he'd just walk straight into mount. There was no like side control, there was no warning. It was just suddenly you're getting mounted. I think he does it here against Pulver too. I don't think he manages to, um, I don't know if he manages to grape this leg in time, but uh, we'll see. Real history lesson for people who only saw the arse end of BJ Penn's career. This dude was so scary. So scary and so good. And he made so many... He was doing techniques then that people still aren't using effectively now because he had this incredible leg dexterity. And that would you would think that would apply really well to guard, but he applied it to the top game. He would be using all four limbs while sort of floating on top of you. Big step into mount. Beautiful. So returning to Saint Denis, Saeed tries to lift him. He's over the top of that left, uh, that right knee, Saeed's right knee. And what does he do instead? He doesn't grape the leg there. He goes. Oh, he ends up trying to step over that knee and then just dismounting. Unfortunately, that means that Saeed gets his knee back in. So this, this is the important point. When Benoit Saint Denis dismounts, boop, that knee is inside. That's not what you want. That is not, that's not side control there. That's a guard recovery happening. And then Benoit saint tries tries to, oops, tries to step over into mount while not being close enough. And, the, oh, oh, he did pop that knee out briefly, but this knee is going to come back in. This, this leg, the knee is going to come back in and this leg's going to go over the top. And then you're into a leg entanglement, which is not what you wanted. Boom. And we're heel hooking territory here. The one thing I would say about Benoit Saint Denis is that from very early on in his career, he's been pretty good at uh, defending leg, leg entanglements, generally. If you watched his fight with Thiago Moises, who's a, again, world champion in Jiu Jitsu, maybe not the best leg specialist in the world, but very dangerous. And Benoit Saint Denis would let him roll on an e bar, punch him a few times, escape, and then let him do it again and do the same thing. The knee here, th the important point here is normally. The knee being between the line of his knees. So he's pretty much safe here. You can see his knees peeking out here already. But he is sort of off balance and Said sits up. And because of, again, this is a unique factor of having a, a boundary. Because of where this is, he can't really go anywhere. So he's stuck here with both legs being snatched up. And even though it's a really unathletic position for Saeed, he's able to power his way up and scoop out the legs. We've jumped forward a bit. Things are get going badly for old Benoit. Um, this is a really nice back escape here. So this is full back mount. Uh, he's got one hand under and one hand over attacking the neck. It's a real dangerous position. And Benoit saint -Denis does something that the, the B team lads have been doing. Uh, for their back escapes recently, particularly from the body triangle. But I really like this. So he's controlling the choking hand at all times. You know, it's out here, it's away from him. He's not in immediate danger of being choked, which is step one for these sort of things because people start doing their escape and then they go, oh, I'm not fighting his hands and they're now under my neck. But he's going to use the floor to scrape him off. Did you see that? Let's go back and go real slow. So he's going to reverse, he goes to the floor and he reverses his hips here. Boom. Now, this is really interesting because if uh, Saeed, if the position had just stayed constant, if Saeed was still on his back, Saeed's hips would be up here, wouldn't they? You'll notice that they're not. He's sort of on the side now because Benoit saint is like crotched down on this top, on this bottom knee. And this top hook here isn't even in 
where it as a hook it's basically just hanging on his hip so it's it, his that position has suddenly become oops let's go back that position has suddenly become much less effective just with that turning of the hips down pop now he turns into look he's already falling off and this is like MMA fighters, they don't tend to have good guards, so you can guard past them a lot if you end up training with them in a nogi session, but they tend to be very good at getting out with you on their back because low-end MMA, you work out very quickly that giving up your back to someone, they can't really hit you very effectively when they're on your back. They've got one move they can go to, which is the, which is the choke. They're not going to risk going to an arm bar, and if you turn into them, you end up on top. So he turns in. As you can see, Saeed's already falling off. He pins that hand to the floor. And he reaches over the head too, which is also useful. But yeah, just pops straight out on top. Makes a really good situation out of a really bad one. So let's watch that one more time. Controlling the top hand. Hips go down. Turns through. Pins the hand to the floor. Stands up. Shakes him off and reaches over the head to pull him back down to the mat. Now, you, say you could be throwing up an arm bar there or something else, but it's it's not him on your back in a dominant position anymore. It's you on top of him or you know, Sandini on top of it. Jump forward to round two. This gives us a chance to talk about Benoit Sandini's striking. It's very wooden. Uh, his defense is almost non-existent. He throws big punches and immediately gets caught with counters coming back, especially on his left side because he's a southpaw. He throws big, powerful left hand and immediately gets caught with uh, left hands coming back. Or sorry, right hands coming back. If you watched him against Dustin, he got uh, dropped with the right hook. Uh, that was the last droppage, but he was hit with that right hook pretty much constantly. Even Tiago Moises was hitting him with open side counters. But what he does have is this wicked left leg. And this is an advantage of being a southpaw. Paul, Paulo Costa has this, but he's an orthodox fighter. He fought like eight uh, southpaws in a row, and he was awesome against them with this body kick. And then he fought an orthodox fighter, and he was suddenly crap. And you're like, how did that happen? It is because he, he relies so much on the on the back leg. If he, he throws it in a second, hold on. there we go. This boom. Now, not ideal kicking form. Not protecting himself. His his foot's pointing pretty much forward. That could be pretty bad for your knee if you're not careful. Um, but he has a powerful round kick here, and because of the stance matchup, Benoit Sandini has his right foot forward. Matthew uh, Mario, sorry, Mario Said has his left foot forward because of that both of them are kicking with their power leg into the open side the open side is the side that your belly button is pointing to to make it easy because if you kick to the other side he doesn't even need to turn much and you'll kick him in the back like a pro wrestler taking a chair shot um, there's also you know there's just your shoulder your back all that good stuff on that side that stops you from really getting hurt too badly and of course if he drapes that arm over it he's caught it uh, on this side is basically just your arm protecting you. Unless you pick your leg up to check, which is obviously what you do in a, a kickboxing sport. But we're in MMA here. Um, so basically, like, if this hand gets out of position, or this hand gets out of position, you can kick them in the body for free. And the, uh, the really great thing is that if you kick them on the arm, probably not going to catch it. It's going to hurt. It's going to slow them down. They're going to stop throwing punches with that hand. Uh, and, and if you're Yodson Clyde or someone like that, you can just break their forearm. <laughs> But uh, that's the benefit of the matchup. Benoit saint comes into this matchup knowing that that's what he does against orthodox fighters. Orthodox fighters don't see southpaws as much, and he can just go ham with this kick, as he does. And the great thing about that kick, and he, he was doing it from round one, and he's famous for it, but the great thing about it is that you can just fake it, and the dude runs a mile. Yeah, see? If, you respect, if they respect it, look, that... Is, is shit you see in stadium Muay Thai, really good southpaws or really good orthodox fighters against southpaws. If they respect your back leg, you can start doing that and popping in left straights instead. Benoit saint is not the trickiest fighter on the feet, but having that one weapon that guys respect so much and that does so much damage is incredibly useful. It makes up for like his really uh, slapdash defense. The fact that he kicks with nothing in front of his face. If you watch his fight with Moises, he just gets cracked here every time he throws the kick, and it doesn't matter because he's rock hard. But having this, this powerful kick, really opens up a lot of doors. Head outside, single attempt, butt drag, always four fingers deep. Or if you're women's MMA, bowling ball grip. Starts pulling his way around to the back. 
Saeed starts pulling it. Now, this is quite interesting. Saeed's going to pull this leg through. And again, we were talking about knee lines. So this knee and that knee, when he pinches them together, he's going to try and pull Benoit saint -Denis knee through that to attack the leg. But if you notice this, the commentators go mental for it. But look where Benoit saint -Denis leg is. His knee is is basically out of this encirclement here, the, the, the two legs around it. He puts this foot on Saeed's butt cheek, which is really important. Anytime you see Benoit saint -Denis in, a, in a leg entanglement, he's got the other leg behind the opponent's butt pushing them away. And that's just basically making sure that his leg isn't dragged deep. What Saeed does is he moves the foot, which is in, not even there, sorry, but the foot that's trapped in here, he's going to move it across to that side of his body into sort of 50-50 entanglement, which is a great way to stop the other guy standing up. And then he's going to start working on the heel hook here. But as you can see, Benoit saint -Denis knee is pretty shallow in there. He's also got this leg wedged behind this knee here, and he's pushing it away, and he's just trying to slip his knee through. He's got the heel there, but the pressure isn't really on yet. Kicks away, gets the knee out, slips free. Back on the feet, we're going to do big kicks, big punches to Donkey Kong-ass punches. This is, if you watch all of Benoit saint -Denis fights, particularly against dudes who are like not terrified, when he throws that left hand, this side of his jaw is completely open. So he'll throw that left hand to the body or the head or whatever. This guy will throw the right hand back and just catch him dead to rights. And he's got a great chin, so it doesn't matter much. But typically, really good southpaws, you're popping in your shot, and then you've got to move. You've got to move your head. You've got to pull back. You've got to push him away. You've got to do something. You've got to have defensive considerations. And Benoit saint -Denis has basically none most of the time. This is clever though. Watch this. Faints the body kick and knees. I love that. That's actually really smart. Saeed is reaching down trying to uh, protect his body here. Oh, threatens the uppercut. Hip fakes him here. Fakes him. Look at that. Boom. Beautiful. And that's where like mechanic, you can have dog shit mechanics. But if you can make reads and, uh, you know, make the most out of someone's expectations, you, you can become a very uh, effective striker, even with really bad technique. Anything else interesting happen in this fight? I think he just hits him with a big uppercut in a minute, which is great. There was the right hand coming across the top of his leg. Look at these. Oh, he did pull that time. Fair play. But the uh, he's got a lot of defensive liabilities. I'm sure you don't need me to point that out. That was good. I do like the way he goes to the body. He was doing that against Dustin. Unfortunately, it sort of plays, because you have to get closer, it plays up your defensive shortcomings. Boom, big uppercut. You can do it again. There we go. Lovely. And that's your finish. But uh, all these fights are available on Brave CF's YouTube page. They've got a, a super cut of them all. Uh, I highly recommend watching them. Maybe we'll do the Santiago one later in the week, but uh, I think I've rambled enough about this dude now.